Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle video tutorials on Photoshop's gradient maps. I'm going to use the adjustment layer version. You can use the standard adjustment one, the image menu one, but that's a destructive effect. You can apply it, but you then have to use undo. So it's not going to use that one, but image menu, adjustments, and gradient map. There it is. But as soon as you apply it, then you've got problems. You have to undo it or use the history panel. So I'm not going to do that one. I'm using the adjustment layer one. Now I'm using Photoshop 221, but you can use 220, 219, etc. So first thing to do, what is the gradient map? Well, what it does, it maps from black to white. And that's why, strange enough, I've got a gradient here, black to white, all the way through the gradient. So you've got the grayscale area there and the white there. And that's a key thing, black and white. So go to a layer, New Adjustment Layer and Gradient Map. So Gradient Map there, comes up with a thing, give it a name. And now the key panel for this is Layers and Properties. So Window, Properties and Layers. So bring those ones up if you want. Now, what you can then do with Properties, and I've just, just go back to Layers, you can see a layer has been added, just a standard layer. Exactly, but it's an adjustment layer instead of an image layer, etc. Now I'm just going to go here. That's the mask. So you've got a little mask, and you can modify the design by using masks. Now I'm not going to do that particularly at this point, but I just want to show you the gradient. So, so there's the actual gradient adjustment gradient map. You can double click that, and that will bring up the properties. And you've got the properties here, and it's a very obviously got there. That's the black area, that's that side. And that's the white side. And that's always the way with all of the gradients. Any gradient you select will be exactly the same. Black, and that's the white area that maps to it all the way through the gradient from black to gray to, to white. So if I select a different gradient there, you can see blue all the way through to the yellow. Again, that's the black area, and that's the white area. And it maps exactly to this gradient over here. So you've got the blue here which was the black, and you've got the yellow here, which is the white, and that's why it maps there, the white and the black. And if I just go back to the layer, just quickly so I can show you there. So that's the black, and that's the white. Now what you can do, of course, just to go, let's go to this background one, I can invert it. So layer, I don't want to do that one, image menu, and adjustments, and I want to invert. So if I invert it, now that becomes the white and that becomes the black. So if I get rid of that one, you can see it's black now over there, and white there. That's why the blue is now moved over there and the yellow is moved there. That's the way it works. Now what you can do, just to quickly show you another one, let's just get rid of that gradient map. Go to this gradient and now, just quickly grab this gradient tool up there. Might be in a different position for you. Just select a gradient there, click there, bring up that, and I'm just going to create a different gradient. So black there and black there. So black all the way through to white, with a bit of gray in between, a bit of gray there, a bit black. Now I'm just going to add it. I'm going to add it with linear. So just drag across. You've got black there, white, black. So if I go back now to my gradient map, simply you can see now the blue, which mapped to the, the black area, and the yellow, which is the white area, and the blue again, which is the black area. So you get that gradient map, that design. Now if I go and select this one, I can do radial. You can see the black area. If I can move that, see the black area there. That's the blue, and the blue of course is in the center as well because there was some black in there as well. And you've got the yellow, which is the white in that ring design. So you've got that, and you can apply any gradient, so just and double click there and bring up double click there and maybe choose that one, choose that one. And you can see as you go through them, anything that's the black area, which is that, will become the yellow. Well, that's the blue, which is the white area. So it maps exactly like that. So that's the basic key thing. Now, of course, you can use this not just with gradients, but gradients are a great example of showing you how it works. But you can use it obviously images, you can use type, you can use everything. But I'm just gonna go now to an image. 
Now I've got a very dark area here, and I've got a very light area in this bit, and then I've got in between grey and that sort of stuff there. And I'm going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to go to layer, and now new adjustment layer, and down to gradient map. So there's a gradient map, and oh, choose that gradient. I'm just go for a more exciting one. It's that one, red. Now, so that's the black area. And that's the white area. So you can see most of it is very black, very dark. So if I go back there, you can see it's fairly dark. Even that's quite dark because you can see that. If you go now, if I just go to here and I can add a layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to go with black and white. Click OK. I can see then your layer. You can see where, and it's sort of, you can see the blend all the way going through to green there and the red there. And of course what you can do, if you want to double click there, you can make the whole thing a lot darker. If you make the whole thing a lot darker, everything becomes red. Because that is, go up back to this one, double click that, you can see the red is there, and then you've got a lot of red there, and the green is the white area. So you can see the green there. That's using the black and white one. Obviously, there's a little bit of there where it's a bit lighter. So if you go back again, you can see there's a bit of greenish red there as it goes through it. Of course, you can do a lot more with it than that. And you can use any gradient. You can change gradients as well. So I'm just going to remove that one. I don't want that. You can change gradients. So double click. You've got all these different gradients. You've got ones down here. You've got spectrum ones. You've got legacy ones. As well. If you haven't got legacy ones, best way window menu and gradients and right side menu, and you can find the legacy gradient that way. You can choose these ones. You can run through and you can see the black again there, and you've got a very, very faint color there. So blues, black all the way, main blue, and a little bit of white over here. Now, what you can also do, you can modify it, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna remove this one. Just remove that, there, remove that. So you've got this design here. What you can now do, you can use selections. So you don't have to fill the entire design with that adjustment layer. You can just say maybe this one, I'm just using an elliptical, and I'm gonna select a little area there. Just that part. And that's where the adjustment layer will be applied to, only that area. So if I, now with that selected, what you can do, you can go to a layer, New Adjustment Layer and Gradient Map. Click OK. And you can see, oh, let's go for a different gradient. That's one of those ones. You can see the design there. Now you've got slightly more complex. It's, actually, when it's a very complex gradient, it's a bit harder to see the actual effect of the, the colours because, of course, you've got lots and lots of blues and lots of reds there. But it is mapping exactly the same way. I'm going to go for that one. And some work better than others, I have to say. One at the start, say that one. So let's go. For, always, whenever I'm doing these tutorials, there's always ways and you always choose a gradient that just doesn't really reveal. Oh, there it is. The white area again. You've got the green there, which is the white there. And you've got the blues over there, which are more obviously the darker area there. So you can see that. And now if I go back to this layer, you can see the gradient. You've got a mask there. You can see that wave. And what you can do, if you want to, you can add to it. You can remove and just go to the black. And you can apply white. I'm just going to go for a different brush. Let's just choose a different brush than that one. And All right, let's just select the brush. Wrong one. Always choose. Oh, there's always trouble with the brushes because it chooses the. Okay, let's just choose something. Otherwise, it's just going. And now the size, of course, is ridiculously large compared. To, I don't want that size. So, four sixteen. So you can see when you add more and more white, that's where the adjustment layer is applied. So you can say create a nice blurry effect there, and you can see that on the adjustment map there. You can go to black. And then you can remove it. So you can just remove it. And you can see it just get cut away from there. Just down to, that's the only area now with the adjustment. 
Well, also what you can do, and I'm just going to, you got this, now it's probably best to, let's just remove that. Just go right back to the start. Just going to go with this gradient here, the selection, just create a selection again, and I can go to layer, new adjustment layer, and down to gradient map again. Click OK, change the gradient map so it's a bit more exciting, and you can see the design there. Well, what you can do, you can go to the move tool and you can move it around. So you can, you know, you don't have to keep it in the same place. So if you decide, you know what, I want to reveal this area, apply the effect to this area, you can. Or you can say, oh, I want it over there, or I want it maybe not so good. But you can just change it. And of course, you can change the shape. You can tweak the design in all kinds of different ways. What you can also do, you can apply effects to it. So simply go over here to Gradient Map, just go there, the Gradient Map, that's the key thing, select that one, and then go to Filter and Blur. And you can go to, say, Gaussian Blur, and you can apply effect like that. Now you can also apply other ones, you obviously got liquify. Not all of the filters are available, unfortunately. Now if I go to this one, and then try it, filter, you can see nothing's available. That's why I say select there. Not certain why, it just doesn't allow you to do it either way. It'll make sense because obviously that's what it, you know what you want to do, but it just seems to not allow you to do it unless you're actually on that thumbnail. That's the key thing. So you can apply effects and you can still move it around and you can see the obviously adjustment layer is applied to that. Now I'm just going to remove that. So you've got this. I'm just going to remove that. So back to the completely the images there. What you can also do is you can I'm going to fade thing because there's no fade feature if I go to property so I go to layer new adjustment layer and gradient map so click OK there and again that one which is the say that blue one so you've got this design you've got the blue you've got obviously there that's the gray area and the blue there which is the black area but there's no fade so you get the full-on effect well how do you get rid of that well we do layers and you can just go over here to Capacity. That's the thing. Just turn that down to 50 and you can see it fade away. We'll put it down to zero and you get the original image. But you can fade in between so you can have a slightly more or slightly less of your effect. And also you've got blending modes. So if you want to, you can use these blending modes and it creates different interesting color effects there, like with using difference or exclusion. So that's quite useful. Now, what you can also do, and I'm just going to now. Go back to the original image. Now, this is complete with it, nothing else. What you can do, you can use smart objects. So there, go to layer menu and smart objects, convert to smart objects. So I've converted to a smart object. Smart objects are great because what happens is you can use smart filters. You can use smart adjustments or adjustments, which can be edited at any point, but also it's non-destructive. So all these effects, everything is non-destructive. So the original image is still there. Untouch, and you can remove all the effects, etc. So with this, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a blur. So filter and blur, Gaussian blur. So there's the Gaussian blur. Now I've got that applied there. Now what you can do, you can use this. You can use image menu, adjustments, and gradient map if you want to. Perfectly reasonable. You can also, if you want, you can use layer menu and new adjustment layer and gradient map. If you use this approach, what happens, a layer will be added on top, exactly the same as before. Just as reasonable to use, but what you have to do then is if you want to combine it as a complete smart object, then you have to select both and use that as a smart object. So it's slightly different. So it's better in this case to use the adjustment menu, which is still non-destructive. I know it's slightly confusing now, in the sense this is, when it becomes a smart object, you can use these as a, as a non-destructive effect as well. So gradient map with that one selected, and then you can go and select the, the gradient, exactly the same as before. So you can see the, the yellow there, which is the black area, and you've got the blue, which is there, and you've got the orange there, around there, and the purple there. And that maps again with your, click OK, and you can quickly reveal it by just clicking there. You can see the black area there, and the gray, and the white running, whitish running through there. And you can remove it at any point. Just go to that little eye there and just click on there. 
You can remove the Gaussian blur if you want. Click on it there. And also, if you want to change anything, you can go to double click on there to bring up the gradient map there. And you can run through the gradients there. So all different different designs can be. Now the thing is, you got this. What well, another thing you can do is you got the gradient map here. You can go over to this side. There's a little little options here, and that does enables you to fade things. So double click, and you've got the slightly different format, slightly odd. But however, this little box, this panel enables you to maybe go to make the so that's the original image. So I've completely removed the adjustment. You can see, so you're doing the fade exactly the same as before. So you can fade it there, or you can use blending modes if you want to use blending modes like difference. Weirdly, it doesn't change rapidly as you go through it. It'd be nice if it did, but it doesn't. So you haven't extended to that. So you can set it to difference there. And again, you can remove it if you want to or not. And again, you can always still continue to add another layer menu. New adjustment layer on top of that, and gradient map if you want to do that. Click OK. And then you can add different combinations there that way. And of course, go to layers and you can see that. And if you want to have it all as a smart object, again, just select both and then layer and smart objects, convert to smart object. So it all becomes one smart object, which you can then move around and like that. Turn, maybe go to edit, and it doesn't damage the underlying image. That's the key thing. So transform, warp, and you can apply different effects like that. And also, what you can do, you can apply effects on top of this. So filter and maybe a different Gaussian blur or wave, maybe. And so on and so on. So there's literally obviously it takes a bit of time to process that, but it's doing quite a bit of work there. You can see when you run through all this, adjustment layers and the gradient map, super useful for all kinds of amazing effects. Amazing how long it takes to process that when it's doing it. Don't know why it's taking a long time. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. I'm always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many, many other applications. Also adding new tutorials every day or so. So always appreciated. Just please subscribe and check out the channel every once in a while. Also, any comments? Always, you know, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? And it still hasn't done it. Progress. That's not very quick. I think it's probably crashed, actually. I think it's uh, always thinking about it for a bit. So I say any sort of comments, things that I didn't explain well, please let me know. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.